Good morning everyone. So welcome you all to the second tutorial in the series of JMeter. And in today's session we'll be covering up with JMeter test plan and touching upon thread group and workbench side by side. Since thread group is also a part of test plan but we are covering it separately because this is the backbone of JMeter. I mean thread group or the number of threads only determine the capacity of your load and makes you able to understand and execute all the scenarios. So I'll just open JMeter from here and let's start from default. I'll close all whatever is open. So yes. So what is test plan? I mean if we take JMeter out from the picture and talks about manual testing, so test plan is something which consists of test scenarios and test data which makes you execute a real-time condition or a test. So similarly JMeter's test plan also consists of different type of thread groups, controllers, samplers and whatever components you see here. Just in order to make sure that a particular scenario is executed properly. For example, if I want to execute a scenario in which I want to put a load of 25 users concurrently on Google server. So what would my test plan contains? Since I need 25 users, that means I need to add thread group. So I'll add thread group from here. So for hitting up Google server, I also need an HTTP request for that I add a sampler that is HTTP request and for viewing results I add a listener say view results in table. So this thread group HTTP request and my listener makes up my test plan. So this is just a basic example to you know make sure that you understand what a test plan is and you should not get confused. It is the same test plan that we use in manual testing. In manual testing we write steps and here we just add components just in order to make sure that the executed scenario is as per the requirement. So basically JMeter executes all this in order. If I put HTTP request, if I say, if you say I put another request sampler FTP request. So as of now, JMeter will first execute HTTP request and then FTP. But if I move FTP request here, so the order of sequence change. So probably by now you must have understand. It is just like step one and step two. Right? So I'll just remove it from here. Everything is right click in JMeter. You just need to right click to see whatever options you have got here. Also remove here, remove, yes. So next is the thread group. So what is the thread group? So thread group is basically number of users that you are using to hit your server under test. So you can right click on the test plan, add thread, thread group. Right, I'll remove this one. Okay, so I can rename this thread group as test1, right? So, thread group now consists of three major properties. First is the number of threads. It is very simple and clearly understandable that these are the number of users. For example, we were just discussing some times back that we're going to test a scenario in which we will put a load of 25 users on server. So 25 users is pretty much equal to 25 threads. So I have put 25 here. So before explaining ramp up period, we'll come down to the loop count. So as clearly understandable from the statement only loop count is the number of iterations this 25 users are gonna perform. So by default it is one which means that 25 users will execute once that is that is 25 times. So the number of iterations is 
25 multiply by 1 25 but if I change the loop count to 2 here this means that these 25 users will now execute two times and number of iterations become double that is 50 so you will have 50 samples or 50 results with same request going to the server right okay so now what is ramp up period so basically this is very important ramp up period is the time which jmeter takes to bring all of its users in a running mode and hitting your servers so if my ramp up period is one second here it means that as soon as i start my test all the 25 users will directly jump in and hit the servers which i may or i may not want depends on the scenario which I am testing. For example, if I want to test a scenario in, in which I want every second new five or say six users to add up and then hit the servers. So this is called a sequential load in which you are not putting all load at a time. So for example, if I put five here, so this means that 25 users takes five seconds to be up and running so every second five users are up this is also called step load because every second you're putting five more users in so just to you know make sure that your server also behaves properly if it is put under this condition right okay so the next in the thread group is scheduler option which is also very very important for example say you're in a QA team and your development team is also doing coding and you have to do performance testing on the same environment so since the coding is going on too it may be possible that you know development team are making some changes which makes your result vary from what they actually have to be say you may not get the actual results response time latency because you know the coding is going on there and it may take a longer time to get results out from there so you can always use this scheduler option so what does this do it's very very easy to understand that this is making your jmeter execute your statements on a particular time for example say today it's right now 9 a.m. and I want this to be executed on 8 p.m. so I can always put the time out here 8 p.m. and till how much time I want to execute I want it to be executed for say 30 minutes so I can put this here if you want any startup delay that is something like the time in which you want jmeter to take after bringing all your load up and hitting the servers so you can also define the duration here for the time you want your test to run and it will automatically stop after that time so i'm sure all these options out here in thread group is very much clearly understandable and you also have this action to be taken after sampler error you can continue sampler error is something like you didn't get a response the server which you're hitting wasn't ready and up so what do you want to do you want to move to the next sample or you want to stop there you can also stop the complete test or a complete thread so it all depends on you and also on the scenarios which you're testing right so the next is the workbench so i'm sure you all must be having this question that why this workbench is kept separate from test plan does it have something which test plan does not have yes it does so when you go to workbench and add non-test elements so both of this are just present in fact three of these are just present in workbench and not part of test plan 
So before I go ahead and explain Workbench in details, the most important thing yet that you need to know is that all the elements under this Workbench, whatever you add here, say logic controller, if controller, add samplers here, all these will not get saved when you're saving your test plan. These have to be saved separately as a test fragment. For example, you can you know select all this and say save selection as or save as test fragment. But automatically it won't get saved with your test plan. So basically, workbench consists of some elements that you do not want to save with your test plan. You just want to keep it just to make your execution easier and you can always copy properties from here and there. For example, I'm just giving an example. This HTTP test script recorder is a part of Workbench. But the target recording will always be safe under test plan or Workbench depending on how you choose it. But because you want to choose it to be under test plan, so you can select it as this test plan and test one. So, so you see that test trip recorder itself is not a part of workbench but the thing or the actions it is doing is a part of workbench. So probably we'll be explaining this test script recorder more in detail in the coming sessions and of course the samplers, logical controllers and how to build up a valid and a complex test plan will be explained later on this sessions. So this is all we had for this session today. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.